Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I'm going to read a scripture in your hearing. Psalm 33, verses 6 through 9. Psalm 33, verses 6 through 9. I'm going to read it in your hearing <clears throat> from the New King James Version of the Bible. text says, by the word of the Lord, the heavens were made and all the host of them by the breath of his mouth. He gathers the waters of the sea together as a heap and he lays up the deep in storehouses. Let all the earth fear the Lord. Let all the inhabitants of the world stand in awe of him. Hallelujah. For he spoke and it was done. He commanded, and it stood fast. <laughs> the title I have may not match the text, but this is a short version of a whole chapter that I didn't want to read. The title for today's message, Healthy Living and the Second Coming. Father, <laughs> listen, you are indeed worthy of all the praise that we just gave you. Amen, amen, amen. May the same spirit that we invoked in the praise portion of this worship experience be the same spirit that speaks to our hearts. Be glorified, Lord. It's our prayer in Jesus' name. Amen. Hallelujah. Healthy living and the second coming. <laughs> Amen. This is part one of a two-part message. The Seventh-day Adventist Church from its inception, from its beginning, has proclaimed the gospel of Jesus Christ. Amen. There has not been a time that the church has not preached the gospel. The church has proclaimed that according to Bible prophecy, time is short. But the good news is that salvation through Jesus Christ is available to all who believe. Hallelujah. Uh, since the mid-1800s, this proclamation, a proclamation of the good news, the proclamation that time is short, has gone forth from the north, northeastern part of the United States to every inhabited part of the world. This proclamation, this sharing of the gospel has not been done privately or secretly. Uh, it has been done as an open proclamation. It has been a bold proclamation. It has been a full-throated proclamation. A proclamation uh, through uh, books and tracts, pamphlets and newspapers and magazine articles, uh, on the radio, on television, through reel-to-reel -reel projectors and cassette tapes and CDs and DVDs and MP3s, on TikTok and on Facebook and, and, and on Instagram, uh, or through YouTube and, and through Spotify, through music and through movies, through preaching in churches and on street corners, in homes and in jungles, wherever and whenever and however, the Seventh-day Adventist Church has boldly proclaimed the good news of salvation through Jesus Christ for all who believe. Not only has it been a bold proclamation, it has been an urgent proclamation. For 161 years, the imminent return of Jesus Christ within the context of the three angels' messages of Revelation 14 have been declared with force and urgency. Fear God, give glory to him, for the hour of his judgment has come, 
and, 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 and uh, Babylon is fallen, is fall. If anyone worships the beast or his image or receives his mark on his forehead, on his hand, the same shall drink the wine of the wrath of God poured out full strength. This is a bold and urgent message. The, the coming of Christ to judge the world, it, it must be shared. Uh, the trumpet has to sound. People have to be told. People have to be warned. The time is short. Jesus is soon to come, and eternal life is at stake. This is our message. This is our, this is our burden. At the same time, the Seventh-day Adventist Church, from, from its inception, from its beginning, has, uh, as a, has also proclaimed, just as boldly and, and, and with equal importance and urgency, a message of good physical and mental health. Uh, since the 1860s, this proclamation has spread from the northeastern part of the United States to every inhabited part of the world. Uh, this proclamation of good health, this sharing of the good news concerning healthy living has not been done privately nor secretly. It has been an open proclamation. It has been a bold proclamation. It has been a full-throated proclamation through books and tracts and pamphlets and newspaper articles and magazine articles, on radio, on television, through reel-to-reel -reel projectors and cassette tapes, CDs and DVDs and MP3s, on TikTok and on Facebook and on Instagram and on YouTube and Spotify, through music and movies, through teaching in churches and on street corners, in homes and in jungles, in our hospitals and in our clinics, whenever and wherever and however the Seventh-day Adventist Church has boldly shared the good news of healthy living found in Scripture. Not only has the church been bold in teaching uh, um, about the second coming, it has been bold in teaching about healthy living. Has been bold about proclaiming the urgency of the second coming, and the church has been bold about proclaiming the urgency of healthy living. For, for over 150 years, the message of health has been declared with force and urgency. The message of health listen to me now, is a preparatory message. It's, it's a bold and urgent message. It's, it's a part of the judgment hour message. The message of health, healthy living, it, 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 it must be shared. The trumpet has to sound. Uh, people have to be told. People have to be warned. Time is short because Jesus is coming soon, and all who are not prepared to meet Jesus will be lost. Now, it may seem that the church proclaims two completely contradictory messages. One, one message is an urgent message proclaiming the coming of Christ uh, and the end of time as we know it. He could come at any moment, uh, a time could end. The other message, the other message proclaims the urgent message of health, which teaches quality, healthy living in this world before Jesus comes. Seems contrary. One, one time is short. The other, uh, you can live longer. A one, we must get out of this world, and the other, you can live better right here in this world. Two, two contradictory messages. However, the opposite is true. A message of healthy living actually complements and helps prepare believers to accept the warning message. A message of healthy living actually prepares us to receive the message and respond appropriately to the, appropriately to the message of the three angels. How does it, how does it work? Here's, here's what one commentary says. The body is the only medium, a servant of the Lord says this, the body is the only medium through which the mind and the soul are developed for character building. Therefore, it is toward the physical body that the devil directs his temptations, 
hoping, hoping to weaken and degrade the physical powers. His success here means the surrender to evil of the whole being. The tendencies of our physical nature, unless under the dominion of a higher power, will surely work ruin and death. Okay, so, so, so what are you saying, Pastor? Here's what I'm saying. I'm saying that our lifestyle in regards to health, especially at the end of time, matters. It matters right now, and it matters for eternity. Uh, Satan attacks us physically, hoping to capture us spiritually. Look at Job. Job is just, he, he, he's, he's an upright man. He, the Bible says he's perfect, and he, he hates evil. He shuns evil. King James, he eschews evil. And so the so devil didn't come to him and take his money. Right? After, after, he, after he, he lost everything, he was like, okay, I'm still praising God. The Lord gives and the Lord takes away. Blessed be the name of the Lord. The devil said, I got him. He said, yea, touch his body and he will curse you. The more in harmony we are with God in regard to our physical health, the better we're able to respond to the urgent call of the gospel. Our physical bodies, our physical bodies house our minds. God doesn't speak to us through the flesh. The devil does. God speaks to us through our minds. But if our physical body, if the house of the mind is sick, then the brain is sick. Can't hear the Holy Spirit. The more in harmony we are with God in regard to our physical health, the better we're able to respond to the urgent call of the gospel. The, the simple question is this. Do you trust God enough to follow his health laws in preparation for the second coming? <laughs> that preacher then lost his mind. Here's what we need to know today. The provisions for healthy living and thus character building in preparation for the second coming were given to man at creation and are still available to us today. Amen. 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 I, hope you, I hope you didn't just gloss over what I just said. What we need to physically prepare for the second coming was given to us in the garden, to prepare our bodies and thus our minds to be ready to meet Jesus, was given, us, given, was given in the Garden of Eden. In the book of Genesis, the first two chapters in the creation narrative, God provided all that we need for life and health. In this church, the Seventh-day Adventist church, we recognize and acknowledge these provisions as being foundational to healthy living and spiritual vibrancy. Let me, let me just put in a statement from Paul. I have not yet obtained, but this one thing I do. I press toward the mark of the upward call in Christ Jesus. I'm just putting that in there so I can keep on preaching. Hallelujah. Drawn out and developed from what God provided in the Garden of Eden are eight principles or health laws. I mean, y'all y'all have heard, all of you have heard this if you're an Adventist. We call these principles the eight laws of health. Amen. And we put it in an acronym to make these eight laws memorable. New start, right? Nutrition, exercise, water, sunshine, temperance, air, rest, and trust. Foundational to healthy living. To live life living. Some, some people are living life dying. 
But to live life living, we need to eat nutritious food, right? The, the, we, 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 so we need to, the Creator gave us the most nutritious diet. Can somebody say amen. amen. If we're going to live life living, we go to Genesis. The Creator gave us the most nutritious diet. Genesis chapter 1, verses 11 and 12. Then God said, let the earth bring forth grass, the herb that yields seed, the fruit tree that yields fruit according to its kind, whose seed is in itself on the earth. And it was so, verse 12, and the earth brought forth grass, the herb that yields seed according to its kind, the tree that yields fruit, whose seed what is in itself uh, according to its kind. And God, God saw that it was good. And then verse 29 of the same chapter, Genesis chapter 1, and God said, See, I have given you every herb that yields seed, which is, is on the face of all the earth and every tree uh, whose fruit uh, yields seed. To you it shall be food. We're in the context of making sure that our minds are, are right to respond to the promptings of the Holy Spirit so we can be ready for the coming of Jesus Christ. How do we make sure our minds are right? Our bodies have to be healthy. If our bodies are healthy, then our minds can get all it needs in order to get gets everything it needs. The first thing we see in the text is God says he gave us what we should eat in the garden. Well, I, got, I, got, I got like six people who said amen. All you do is remind yourself just like, I have not yet obtained. But then you got to say the rest of the text. This one thing I do, that word oppress in Greek <laughs> is, is the same word that we get our word persecute from. So if you're pressing toward the mark, you're, you're pursuing it as a persecutor pursues the one he's persecuting. Verse, 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 verse um, 16, Genesis chapter 2, just, just, just so you know, just, just for emphasis, the mouth of two or three witnesses, every word is established, right? The text says this, uh, verse 16, chapter 2, and the Lord God commanded the man, saying, of every tree of the garden you may freely eat. Amen? Amen. Save one. <laughs> Foundational to healthy living, to live a life living, we need to, to exercise so God provided means in the garden for physical labor. Yeah, we need, we need to exercise. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> Genesis chapter 2, verse 15. Watch this. Then the Lord God took the man and put him in the garden, watch this, of Eden, to tend it and to keep it. Yeah, physical work, physical work, amen, is exercise. Uh, those of us who sit in our chairs all day, that's not what God intended. Amen? Amen. Hallelujah. Physical work. Amen. Movement. Hallelujah. Amen. Foundational. I'm, I'm going to move fast. I'm not going to stay on anyone at one time. Y'all don't, don't fear. Foundational to healthy living. To live life living, got to drink water. Amen. Not coffee. Not Kool-Aid. Amen. Amen. Not Sprite, amen, Buble, or whatever it's called, amen, amen. Genesis, God, God gave us water, Genesis chapter 1, 9 and 10. Then, then, then God said, let the waters under the heavens be gathered together in one place and let dry land appear. And it was so. And God called the dry land earth. And the gathering together of the waters he called seas, and God saw that it was good. Hallelujah. Foundational to healthy living, to live life living. We need to, we need to, we need to stay, um, we need to stay out of darkness. Amen. Spiritual, but also physical. God created the sun to bless us. Sunlight, sunlight is necessary to live life living. Genesis 3, 
uh, Genesis chapter 1, excuse me, 3, 4, and 5. Then God said, let there be light, and there was what? And God saw that the light, uh, that, that saw the light, that it was good, and God divided the light from the darkness. He called uh, the light day and the darkness night. So, the evening and the morning were the what? First day. Then verse 16, same chapter, Genesis 1. Then God made two great lights, the greater light to rule the day and the lesser light to rule the night. He made the stars also. God provided this, this, this light, this, this thing, the sun, so that we could have life abundant on this earth, so we could live life living. How many of you have been enjoying the weather? It's been absolutely incredible. But then, but then, we say it needs to rain because we need some water. Amen? But the weather has been, go out in the sun, you walk around, anybody been basking in the sun the last couple of weeks? Hallelujah. Put it in a jar. <laughs> Put it in a jar. A foundational to healthy living, to live life living. We need self control or temperance. God put it in the garden. It's in the garden. In, in, in the original plan for man to thrive and, and to have everything he needs in this world so his mind can be right to resist the, 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 the pull of the devil, it's in the garden. Temperance, temperance. Genesis 2, uh, Genesis chapter 2, 16 and 17. Again, and the Lord God commanded the man, saying, of every tree of the garden you may freely eat. Verse 17, here's the temperance, but of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, you shall not eat it, for in the day that you eat of it, you shall surely die. Have some self-control. This one, this one, this is the, it's in the middle of the whole acronym. This is the, this is the pivotal one. You can, you can eat one oatmeal raisin cookie, a good, good vegan oatmeal raisin cookie that you buy from Wildwood. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> but if you eat six of them, you're intemperate. <laughs> Amen. Or even the good vegan cookies from, from say, uh, from, uh, fu- uh, what is it, uh, from um, Publix. Okay, I done gave it away. Now all my vegan cookies are going to be gone at Publix. Y'all going to go get them. They sell six of them. If you eat all six, you're intemperate at once, if you eat them all at once. <laughs> Servant of the Lord says, if you can control appetite, you can overcome every besetting sin. Okay, none of you fit this category because all of us are saved and we've been saved for a long time. But back in the day, when you used to go out to the nightclub, right, and you met somebody special and you were going to go to do what you were going to do, you went to eat first. The strongest pulls of the flesh don't override appetite. Are y'all listening to what I'm saying? Y'all miss what I'm saying. Amen? Amen. It's coded, amen, because we're in delicate company. But y'all understand what I'm saying. You eat first. That's, that's how strong appetite is. <laughs> Me and my wife, we took this. Uh, we went to Youth Congress some years ago, and this one young lady was with us, um, co-worker's child. We were having a great time until she got hungry. She was miserable, and she was fussing. As soon as she got some food, I mean, she changed just like that. Back to normal. (laughs) Anybody in here like that? Got one witness. Appetite. Hey, listen, self-control matters. Self-control matters. It's in the garden. Amen? Amen. All, you can have all of this is yours. How is it that you have everything at your disposal except for one thing, and the one thing you're not supposed to have, you want it? Foundational to healthy living, to live life living, we need fresh air. Without air, we die. In the United States Marine Corps, uh, they taught us the, the four life-saving steps. 
The very first, restore the breathing. Stop the bleeding, protect the wound, treat for shock. If the, in other words, if I'm laying next to my, if I'm next to my buddy and he gets his leg blown off, if he's not breathing, don't go any further. Restore the breathing because that's the part that matters the most. We need air. We have to breathe. Even, 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 I'm trying to not get political, but in Chattanooga, there's a history of, 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 of and, and other small, uh, in the South, small communities, and probably in the North too, but in the South in particular, putting black neighborhoods next to factories. Alton Park, right up the street here, they just put a new factory right up the street, and it's going to put pollution out. And then you're not going to die right away, but, but there'll be uh, an increase in cancer. Amen? There'll be an increase in lung diseases and all kind of stuff. They don't even know what it is because the air is not clean. In Genesis chapter 2, verse 7, And the Lord God formed man of the dust of the ground. And what did he do? He breathed in his nostrils the breath of life, and man became a living soul. Air is necessary. Got to be able to breathe in order to live. No oxygen, you will die. Amen? Foundation, foundational to healthy living, to live life living, we got to get some rest, y'all. Amen. I have not yet attained. But this one thing I do, I don't even know if I'm pressing, man. I'm, I'm, I'm getting, I'm trying. Man was not created to be on the go all day, every day. It's in, the, it's in the text. Genesis chapter 2, verses 1, 2, and 3. Thus the heavens and the earth and all the host of them were finished. And on the seventh day, God ended his work in which he had done, and he rested. God rested. You can twist it. You can spiritualize it. I take it for what it says. God took a break. Did, it, did he stop caring for the world? He did not. How many mamas in here know you take a break, but you're still on alert for your children? Hallelujah. God rested, it says, and, 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 and uh, on the seventh day from all his work which he had done. Then God blessed the seventh day and set it apart because in it he rested from all his work which God created and made. And then he commanded that we should rest too. Amen. And not just on the Sabbath. Got to go to sleep. Before 8, uh, eight o'clock, preferably nobody's going to sleep at 8. I know you're not going to sleep at 8. But you need to get to sleep before 10. Get your best sleep before 10. What? Before 10? Yes, before 10. Foundational. I could stay there for a long time. Foundational to healthy living, to live life living. Here it is, y'all. We have to trust. In the garden. It's in the garden. It's in the garden. Again, same text we just read. Um, But every other principle we have find its basis in trust. Every single one of them matters not if we don't trust. Here it is, Genesis chapter 2, verses 16 and 17. One more time. And the Lord God commanded the man, saying, Of every tree of the garden you may freely eat, but of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil you shall not eat. For in the day that you eat, you will surely die. If you trust God, he will take care of you. This, is the, this, this text in, in, in Genesis chapter 3, that says that Eve saw that the tree was good for food and to be desired, to make one wise, right? That's that, that context and the way it's written is similar to what Solomon did, right? 
Um, when Solomon asked God for wisdom, he didn't ask God for wisdom. He asked God for the ability to judge. And the same phrase is used in both places. And basically what the text is saying is Eve used her own judgment or thought her judgment was better than that of God's. She trusted herself instead of the one who made her. Trust is critical. You trust God that he has provided the best diet, regardless to what your taste buds say. You trust God that exercise is important, no matter how, um, yeah, it makes you feel while you're doing it. You trust God that water is the best for you, as plain as it is. Amen. You, 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 you trust God. Um, what's next? Sunlight. Amen. Amen. Yeah, put some, put some sunscreen on. Amen. Then you don't get sunburned, but trust God. Right? Self-control. I don't have to run through it. Y'all got me, right? The Seventh-day Adventist Church, almost from its beginning, has been a church that proclaims a holistic message. We believe in the imminent return of Jesus Christ. We believe that he's coming soon. No man knows the day nor hour. We, we preach an end-time gospel. And at the same time, while we're telling people that Jesus Christ is soon to come, while we're telling people to get your house in order, while we're explaining all of the prophecies in Scripture, <laughs> we are world leader in health. Are you listening to what I'm saying? The Seventh-day Adventist Church, we have an end-time message that tells people to prepare for the second coming of Jesus Christ, and it's imminent. I told you before, my first-day friend says he doesn't know any other denomination that talks about the second coming like us and who has an emphasis on prophecy like us. But at the same time, we got hospitals and clinics around the world. We laud Adventist health system down in Florida. We laud the other health system. We have like three health systems in the United States. You know that, right? One out there in the West, Kettering, Loma Linda. Are y'all listening to what I'm saying? And people love our hospitals. Here we are telling people that Jesus Christ is soon to come, and we're saying, listen, here's what you got to do to live longer. Seventh-day Adventist Church, we, we preach a health message. It's not a different gospel. It's not another gospel. It's, it's the, the health message, listen to me and listen to me well, is part and parcel of the everlasting gospel. If you didn't know, the three angels' messages are another form of the everlasting gospel. Are you with me? It's a warning message. Isn't it a good news to get a warning? The bridge is out. Are you, oh, I don't want to hear the bridge is out. Why are you trying to scare me? No, you're thankful. It's a warning message. The text says, And I saw another angel flying in the midst of heaven, having the everlasting gospel to preach to those who dwell on the earth, to every nation, tongue, tribe, and people, saying with a loud voice, Fear God and give glory to him. 1 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 31 says, Whatever you eat, whatever you drink, do all to the glory of God. One way to glorify God is to practice healthy living. So, so if the text says, give God glory, how, is it, how can you witness and tell people your God is good if you're sick? What if, what if we had a whole bunch of broke up folk in this church and we said, oh, God is so good. And everybody's praying for healing. Nobody's getting healed. Everybody's sick. How good is that God? Y'all listening to me? Over 250 research studies done specifically on a seven-day Adventist church have demonstrated, watch this, the sensibleness of living according to the eight laws of health. Adventists live longer and have overwhelmingly fewer deaths from disease than non-Seventh-day Adventists. We got a church member we went to visit the other day. 
97 years old. They said, you got terminal cancer. Dude sitting up. What's up, man? How you doing? Everything good? Mind just as sharp as it wants to be. Got a church member, 95 years old, drives every day, drives all over the city. And has, has no issues. Are y'all listening to me? <laughs> y'all heard of Blue Zones, amen? Here's a reality. There are many of us here today who are suffering from various lifestyle diseases. Lifestyle diseases. Those conditions are reversible. those conditions can be improved. All you have to do is take God at his word. Hallelujah. We weren't created to suffer. It's not God's plan for us to be sick. High blood pressure, diabetes, congestive heart failure, obesity, arthritis, a high cholesterol, cancer, alcohol addiction, drug addiction, poor mental health. None of these things have to be your ruin. Amen? You don't have to be subject to them. It's interesting that those who become Christians, watch what I'm saying, are said to be born again. And with this new birth, you get a fresh chance to live life living. Amen. I'm talking about born again spiritually, but because of what we know, we can be born again physically. Amen. Born again spiritual has to proceed born again physical. Amen. That which is flesh is flesh and that which is born of the spirit is spirit. Uh, this born again experience is the new start that we need. Amen. Uh, we can be physically sick and we, 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 we may be sin sick at the same time. Physical sickness and sin sickness lead to death, but Jesus has declared that he has come that we may have life, hallelujah, and not just any kind of life, but life abundantly. And his declaration is we can have it in this world and in the world to come. Your heads are bowed and your eyes are closed. The thief comes to steal to kill and destroy. But Lord, you said you come that we may have life and have it more abundantly. We recognize that we're living in the shadow of the return of Jesus Christ. And at the same time, Lord, we recognize a necessity to live as healthy as we can while we wait. There's no contradiction, Lord, because as we, we, need, we need to be healthy to carry forth the good news of the gospel. We need, we need to be healthy to do the work that it takes to proclaim this, this, this last warning message to a dying world. We need to be healthy, Lord, so we can hear clearly the Holy Spirit speak to us and we can make our own calling and election sure. We hear this message, Lord. We, we, we recognize uh, the areas where we probably need some improvement. And we're asking for the full power of heaven to help us. Uh, help us to get our appetites in control. Help us to start an exercise routine. Help us to go outside and get sunlight. Give us taste buds for water, Lord. Uh, create, give us the atmosphere with clean, fresh air to bleed, breathe. Uh, help us to have self-control, Lord, and may we trust you through it all. I'm appealing right now in the name of Jesus to somebody who needs to come forth and take a stand in the front, physically demonstrating your commitment to Jesus Christ and your commitment to healthy living in these end times. Is anybody who wants to declare, Lord, I am, I'm in, I'm committed to healthy living? In the midst of the second coming, you're coming forward, just signifying your commitment and you're going to seal it with prayer. Is there one? Hallelujah. I'm committed to healthy living in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. 
healthy living. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Father, in the name of Jesus, we want to thank you for allowing us to gather. We're thankful uh, for a last warning message, a message that helps us to understand where we are in the span of history. Uh, we, we've been on this journey for the entire year, Lord, and we know that Jesus is soon to come. Thankful, we're thankful for this fresh look, Lord. It's not a contradictory message that you called us to proclaim in this church. We can do both things at the same time. We can tell people to get their lives right spiritually, and we can tell them to get their lives right physically. But we can't tell them if we're not right ourselves, Lord. So we have come uh, to the front. We have stood saying, uh, work in us, Lord, uh, a, 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 um, um, a work of reformation. Help us to be committed, Lord, uh, to, to living life living. Help us to be committed, Lord, to, to healthful living. The areas where we, where we have challenges, we pray that you would help us. Um, remove those barriers and obstacles that block us from being committed to exercise or that block us from um, uh, eating right or, or that block us from demonstrating temperance in all things. Uh, help us, Lord, uh, through the full power of the Holy Spirit and through our church family. May we form community, Lord, in such a way that we hold one another accountable so that when you come, we won't be on the outside looking in. We can clearly hear the Holy Spirit and respond appropriately and see you in peace. Is our prayer. That's what we want. Seal our commitments and save us. In Jesus' name, amen, amen, and amen. Hallelujah.